Welcome to Helping Hands with your hosts, John Neiman and Judy Ritchie. Hello and welcome to Helping Hands. This is our opportunity to let you in the community know how you can lend a helping hand to a program or an agency in need. I'm Judy Ritchie, Community Advocate. I'm John Neiman with Aurora Medical Center and welcome to our November edition of Helping Hands. This year has just flown by. We are already into the wonderful month of November, which means Turkey Day, which means Thanksgiving, which means talking about everything we're grateful for. And um, to that end, we're going to talk about Aurora Healthcare, who is our monetary sponsor of the show. And because of them, we can come into your homes and into your radios every month. And also our set design by Harnix on 9th Street. Very grateful for their support for this past 14 years. Where you can see us, you can see us on Life TV or you listen to us on the radio at 101.9 FM. To see a listing of all the wonderful shows on uh, Life TV, go to oshkoshmedia.org, look at the schedule, and then tune in and watch all the shows that help promote Oshkosh as event city. Judy, would you like to introduce our guest? I would. This is a young lady who's involved with an international event in Oshkosh. Uh, this is Cassie Bruss. Uh, who is with EAA, and she really got a baptism by fire this year. Uh, she's new at uh, EAA and still has a smile on her face. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you want to tell us, you know, first of all, a little of your background? Sure. So uh, I'm primarily in HR. Um, so half of my role at EAA is an HR business partner. So I'm the HR liaison to half of the business, uh, basically half of the departments. And then the other half of my job is the program manager for the volunteer program. And explain HR for those that aren't so that's that? human resources. So anything from um, recruiting to onboarding, um, development, employee relations, benefits administration, things like that. And uh, what is your, like where did you go to school? What's your, sure. I just get to know you. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> so um, I went to school at UW Oshkosh. Did, okay. um, I double majored in psychology and human resources. Uh, and then I uh, continued on with my education at Cardinal Stritch where I got my MBA. Um, I spent some time with Oshkosh Corp uh, and then moved over to EAA this past April. Wow, a very nice background. Good, Thank welcome you. aboard. So you are familiar with Oshkosh then because you went to school here. I am. Which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Good in April. So so is, I bet you the time has flown for you too. I love the time has flown because we're talking EAA and <laughs> airplanes here. But with just with everything that you do, you have two different aspects of jobs mm -hmm. working with the, the paid caregivers and the non-paid caregivers. So. I bet you that keeps you very busy. It does. It's it's never a dry moment. I don't think there's been one day where I watch the clock thinking the day's never going to end. It's very fast paced and it has flown by quite a bit, especially with the summer events. Yes. And with the organization, you have lots and lots and lots of volunteers covering all areas of need, correct? We do. We have about um, I would say probably 600 year-round volunteers uh, that help in a variety of uh, capacities. And then over the summer, we have a significantly more um, diverse group of individuals that come in. Um, as soon as the you know frost is gone, people are on our grounds helping prepare for your venture in the summer um, and stay until the frost returns. So do you work with them specifically or do you work with the the in-house volunteers who are here all year? So I support all of the volunteer yeah. programs. So um, during the summer for Air Venture, there's various groups uh, that have a chairperson and a co-chair that help to organize and, and help the volunteers. Um, I help to recruit for volunteers, help to organize the events, things like that. Okay, and when you are recruiting volunteers, you obviously have a job description for everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, but do you do background checks and what type of training do you provide? The training is very different for each group depending on what they're going to do and what their background is. Um, anyone that works with any of our youth does go through a full background check. We have a youth protection policy that both employees and volunteers must follow before they volunteer. And so, but you do have an application process. Somebody can't just walk into the museum or the, the offices and say, I want to volunteer. 
Correct. We do have an online uh, application uh, that is available at eaa.org. Uh, it's a very simple uh, application. It also uh, requires that you list the areas that you're interested in volunteering so we can help match up your skills. Uh, none of our volunteering opportunities require a specific background. We have plenty of opportunities for anyone with or without experience. Um, once the application is submitted, it will come directly to me. Uh, if you're um, going to be working with our youth, I'll talk to them about the youth protection policy. Um, and then the organizer of, let's say, an event that was coming up that you wanted to specifically volunteer with uh, would reach out to you directly for additional training. And the pilots that are involved, like with Young Eagles, do they have even more of a background check? safety checks, anything that goes along with that? They do, and our, our Young Eagle program uh, has pilots uh, that fly those Young Eagles throughout the country. So uh, the background check is about the same, but different trainings uh, are dependent on the area that they're flying in. Now on the list on the screen for our TV audience, um, there was a list of, of different things, and one jumped out uh, because they have these at the Oshkosh Public Museum, they have these at the Paint Art Center. It's called docents. Do you want to talk about docents, what they are? Thank you for putting it back on the screen for us. And then what their training is? Sure, the museum docents are really are the face of our museum. So EA in the community is known uh, mostly for air venture in the summer, but also our museum and other events that are housed. So the docents are, um, there are tour guides, but there's so much more than that. They are the face of EAA when people come in the door. Um, I had been to the museum several times and walked through myself on kind of a self-guided tour. Um, but once I started as a full-time employee with EAA, I walked through on a docent tour and my outlook on, on aviation, the history, what the future holds, um, the history of EAA changed dramatically. Um, so the docents really, um, kind of make aviation and, and the world of aviation come alive for the guests for our museum. And it's nice to have that that background. I mean, a, a lot of the, the docents were either teachers or educators, and they love educating people. We also know that volunteers love to get something back, which is the education that you're providing for them too. But they're passionate about the, the things that maybe you wouldn't know about the Wright brothers or something else. So, uh, and the docents, your docents stay around. They do. A long time. They're year-round. We have several that have been with us for over a decade. Uh, we do have a, a significant amount of uh, retired individuals that are docents, but also our youth. We have several that are in middle school and high school that are the same type of docent as a retired individual that just has a passion for aviation. That so is that, really cool. It to is exciting to see. Which brings up the point, what are the ages uh, for your volunteers? Sure, so most of our volunteers, we require that they're 16 years or older, uh, if they're between 16 and 18 with parental consent. There's certain volunteer opportunities where they can be younger than 16, but we just ask that their parent accompany them. Uh, and then for adults, we have a variety of opportunities available for people of uh, varied backgrounds. Now it's the wonderful month of November, but with November comes looking ahead to the holidays, which are not that far away which means the ever popular Christmas in the air. Mm -hmm. Do you have a hand with Christmas in the air? I help recruit volunteers for Christmas in the air, okay. uh, which this year is on December 2nd. It's a Saturday. Um, it's a very fun opportunity for the community to come into the museum and experience aviation, but with obviously a Christmas twist. Um, volunteering opportunities, uh, there's probably 10 different opportunities available, whether or not you want to um, help provide cookies and milk to some of our uh, youth. Um, we also do Christmas card making stations. Uh, there's letters to Santa. Um, Santa arrives, uh, I believe around noon um, via a helicopter. So there's um, an opportunity as well for volunteers to dress up like elves and help uh, in different areas of the museum. And along with that, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the entertainment, our volunteers, correct? Correct and you want to give an idea, somebody that has not been there before, what types of entertainment do you provide? Um, so uh, caroling is included there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Julie's I haven't Touch of Silver is always always a big mm -hmm. one there. But you're right, lots of, lots of caroling or bell groups. Mm -hmm. It just gets people in the spirit of Christmas because you're walking through 
the museum and you're having these wonderful cookies and hot chocolate and you just get to hear and see all of this going on all day which Correct. is really really cool so it's November people so if you want to vol volunteer specifically for Christmas in the air how should they get hold of you Sure, they can uh, reach out to me directly, um, either through email, uh, email is hr at eaa.org, or they can easily call me, 920-426-4856. Uh, um, and just let me know what you'd be interested in doing. Uh, if you have a preference, I do have um, some groups that like to volunteer either through local businesses. So if it's just a single person, we can definitely find, find a need. Uh, if it's a group of people or an entire family, we can definitely use your help. Okay, and we're talking the holidays, but there's a lot of other events throughout the year not just the air venture so you want to talk about a couple of those sure so some other events uh, we just had september swing uh, which is um, kind of a retro um, dance music uh, just a really fun event um, we have uh, various um, groups that come in throughout the year um, obviously in the summer when we're our busiest is air venture uh, and that brings in um, over 750,000 guests worldwide uh, and over 5,000 volunteers that single week. Okay, but you know John, you can go fly a kite out there too. <laughs> the uh, spring, the uh, big kite event. You obviously haven't I was I wasn't experienced okay. in that yet. No. Nope. Okay, that is really neat because um, my granddaughter used to love coming out and watching all those large kites. The ones that you see on television are right here in our community. They're not the ones like she was used to flying at the park. Basically, she just wanted to tell me to fly a kite. <laughs> That's <laughs> what, it, what she wanted to do. But there are different things. I mean, there, there's the paper airplane thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys do a lot of educational stuff when the kids are out of school. Things yeah. to, to bring it together. So there really is a lot. EAA is not just airplanes. There's there's education with a lot of the things that you do. How do you, do you find it difficult? Because sometimes I, I don't think people understand your role is split. Mm -hmm. My role is quartered. You know, sometimes you're spending a lot more time on one area mm -hmm. of the role than the other. Is that hard to do? Um, I would say sometimes it, it's difficult, especially with the needs of the organization from a business perspective versus the volunteers. But EAA was really founded and, and built on volunteers. So they're near and dear to our heart and we want to make sure that they're taken care of and having fun. And as we're talking about other things that you want people to know, what are a couple that really stand out in your mind, especially being a newbie with the organization? Sure. So about uh, EA in general, are yes. you asking? Sure. So uh, we're obviously a nonprofit, member-based organization that really promotes and supports recreational aviation. Um, we have several programs that really highlight that. We have the Young Eagles program, uh, which is dedicated to our youth. Uh, kids age eight can actually come and experience a, an initial flight and actually go up in an airplane to hopefully spark their interest in aviation, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we also have Eagle flights available for adults that maybe want uh, their first flight as well, but want to know how to become a pilot and see what resources we have available. Um, most people don't know that EAA does have a year-round business. Many people say, well, what do you guys do now that Air Venture's over? And, and we actually are in full swing operation year-round, not just during the summer. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's kind of like when I tour people at the hospital, they, they don't realize that it takes all of these departments to work together. Is it the same thing with you? You have, you have a huge print and mail where, you, where the mail goes out, where you print everything right there on the grounds. Are volunteers still utilized in that area? They are heavily utilized in that area, and we do have a, a group of dedicated volunteers that come on a weekly basis, whether it's um, internal business printing requests, uh, if there's marketing materials for events that are coming up, they'll help with that. But also for members, they get a, a new members that sign up, they get a um, packet of information and actually a member card. Those volunteers will actually package that and mail that out mm -hmm. to them. My, my kids still talk about because when you're a volunteer manager or director, your family was always helping. And the first gathering of Eagles that I had, the, the invitations, there were 900 that had to go out. 
and nobody can picture 900 and then stuffed with everything. And I brought my entire family, we were in the print and mail center, we were spread out, and all they do is remember, are we on 100 yet, are we on 200? A lot mm -hmm. of mail goes through right. EA when you think of all the different divisions that there are there, and like you said, the newsletters and the mailings, there's a lot to there. do. Okay, we, when we were, uh, just before we started, we talked about the chapel mm -hmm. and the availability for weddings and things. You want to talk a little about that? Sure, yes. We have a beautiful chapel on our grounds. Um, I mean, just looking at it at any point in time, it's just rustic and beautiful. Um, we do house um, weddings there pretty often on the weekends, um, so that's available. There's also um, a building right next to it, normally used by the bridal party to get get mm -hmm. ready um, but just a great place to have pictures taken for weddings and things like that too so all that information is also available on our website and it's a beautiful setting around there because there's water features and there's bridges and i mean i, I remember doing a wedding there in the winter with a fireplace going in the snow outside it was just it is a gorgeous place uh, for people just to go out and walk and see and you have the pavilions out there where people can rent those for for picnics or outings like that so there really is a lot more to ea like you said than just when people think of the air venture in that week of the month in the summer because you're, you're an ongoing business with a foundation mm -hmm. that's out there to raise money for things too. Correct, and we do have several outbuildings, but a lot of people don't know actually the museum can be rented as well. So there's various events throughout the year that are housed in the museum. There's a very large hangar where we also have uh, weddings and receptions held there as well. If you want to talk briefly, we're almost out of time, but talk about the, the academy. Um, so th they do things in the summer, they have camps and all of that there for people is to get them interested in um, EAA and airplanes and all of that stuff. What is there an age? I can't remember what. Um, I believe it's a youth academy, a youth academy. over the, the summertime that we do hold a camp uh, during the summer months um, that they can definitely have a sparked uh, sense of uh, aviation uh, and prepare them if they want to go into an aviation focused um, career. And I do have um, my fellow volunteer manager in Manitowoc, her son started there and he's going to aviation school now and somewhere in North Dakota or whatever, but he comes back to EAA mm -hmm. every year and that's what he's going to be. He's going to be a pilot. And I think it's just really, it's really cool that it, he, it sparked something at a camp and his career is laid out for him now. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Our time is almost done. You want to give us, our audience, again, your email and phone number so they can contact you about all the wonderful opportunities. Definitely. So you can reach me at hr.eaa.org and then by phone at 920 Four two six four eight five six. We're so glad that you could be here with us, and we learned a little more. And remember that it's November, but um, uh, Christmas holidays are coming up too, and so that's December second. Correct. At EAA, so uh, we want to thank Cassie for being with us. We want to thank you. Stay tuned, and we'll be back for our second segment of our November edition of Helping Hands. It's not a charity, it's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles, old smiles and new smiles. It's about us, all of us, our community living united because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us?
Hi there, and welcome back to our November edition of Helping Hands. We're so glad that you could be with us and join us. This is the part of the show where we like to talk about what is going on in Event City, which is Oshkosh, what's going on with uh, volunteers, volunteering, different ways to volunteer. Um, so it's kind of like a little chit chat that we have just to catch people up on things. And if you have something going on too, um, please email Judy or myself. Our information is at the end of the show. If there's something you'd like for us to talk about, maybe there's an agency or an event uh, coming up for future shows, we'll be glad to plug that for you. Okay, and there's a lot of things going on. We covered it a little bit last month, and I think it's important to cover it again this month, and that is the need for blood. Uh, you've got the community blood drive on November 13th, which is the middle of the month, but there's always a need, and with all the tragedies we've had you oh. know, this year, um, it is there, and with the holidays coming up, People kind of put it on the back burner and aren't going to do it. So uh, look for a blood drive somewhere in the community. Go to the blood center and uh, donate blood. It's badly needed and it's, it's a lifesaver. Right. If you want to talk about giving a gift, what is the greatest gift that you can give but life and donating blood? And it's, it's easy to do. Uh, they, will, they will go through everything over with you. You come in. But especially during the holidays with the snow and the accidents, really, uh, we really do encourage you. And as Judy said, you can open up the newspaper, you can go online, you can go to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. They'll tell you when all of the blood drives are going on. And there's usually one going on because you, there's a certain time frame for you that you're able to give blood. Right. And so different agencies, whether it's the Red Cross or the Community Blood Center, have them at different times. So we really encourage you, especially during this month of November, which is Thanksgiving. Okay. Be right. thankful for the life that you had. Maybe you've had a blood transfusion before. Maybe a loved one did, and it's a w way of paying back. Absolutely. The other thing is something that you and I are both quite involved with. Uh, I seem to have been recruited for in the past, and that is the annual uh, gift and craft sale at Aurora, which will be a week earlier than we normally do. It will be the weekend before Thanksgiving, and we do Sunday, Monday. So it's Sunday, November 19th, and Monday, November 20th. And we start at 6 a.m. on Monday. Which, if people could remember that, 6 a.m., you get in really, really early. And we have a lot mm -hmm. of caregivers who come at that time because they're just getting off their shift or they're starting a shift, and it's a chance. And the reason it was started, too, uh, over 14 years ago was we wanted to give our caregivers a place to showcase their talents but also a place for, where they could shop during that very busy holiday season while they're at work. And that's why the Holiday uh, Gift and Craft Fair has been around for 14 years. We were a little nervous about starting it on a Sunday because we didn't know how that would go, and we it's did, and it went well. over, it went over well. really, really well. So um, we're appreciative of that. When, when staffing is down a bit, our traffic is down a bit, or if there's a Packer game in the afternoon, we're down a bit. Um, but the public is invited. Um, and the, as far as the vendors, they're primarily the Aurora staff and volunteers. There are a few uh, folks from the community, but we, again, we have an application process just like we do anything else for volunteering, and we screen the type of items. Um, but what we're finding is we have some very unique items. They're one of a kind or very limited edition, and the quality of what we're finding from the staff and volunteers it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a professional grade. Right. And another plus for this, too, is is that the, the profits that we make from the table rental only, the rest of the profits go to the vendors. Whatever we make from the table rental, which is really reasonable, goes into a patient experience fund. So if any caregivers in our, in our hospital or clinic want to do something special for the patients, such as make Christmas stockings to hang on the door or uh, goodie bags or something like that, there, that, that fund is available for them to use that money. And it's, so it's a win-win for everybody. Well, and as, as the person who's kind of coordinating this, what I look at is this is another opportunity to bring the public in to meet staff in a totally different, you know, other than an emergency situation, a crisis situation, and to showcase what Aurora really has to offer the community. Mm -hmm. It's not just the patient care in the hospital bed. It's the support system. It's the outreach to the community. 
there is so much more. And, and we do, one of our models is giving back. And so uh, that was, you just reminded me of that too. We also start a special drive in December. Um, in our cafeteria, we do a hat, mitten, scarf tree. And people are saying, why are you doing it then? But what we hear from the parents and the teachers is when the kids go back to school, when the weather is cold, they have their hats, their mittens, and their scarves. When they come back after Christmas break, they've lost, they've lost it, they can't find it. So mm -hmm. we do a collection ourselves, and then we give them to the schools, the community schools in town. And last year we had eight garbage bags full of hats, mittens, and scarves that we got to deliver to the schools so they would have something during that winter, which was really cold. Right, and at the teacher's closet over at Peace Lutheran Church, uh, also collects the hats, scarves, and mittens because they provide them to the classrooms that are in greatest need. And when you think in terms of Jefferson School, Smith School, um, what's that, Washington School? Yes. Uh, which are the more economically challenged schools, those are in great need. You know, we also talk about the uh, collection for the coats. Well, that ended, the collection ended officially in, at the beginning of November. However, Salvation Army still accepts them because there's always the need. And with having the homeless shelter next door at um, the church yep. to be able to provide a coat to someone coming in who's wearing a thin jacket when it's 20 degrees below mm -hmm. zero. They need to have something warm. And people know that too. Um, items can be dropped off at Aurora for me and I will make sure that they get to the right area because people miss the deadline for the coats and they still have wonderful coats and that to give. We will get the items to the right place, whether it's the warming shelter, Salvation Army, uh, wherever they need to go, we will make sure that they get those items. And Judy here, uh, we're winding down on our time again, but I would just like to say, uh, personally, I am thankful for all the wonderful volunteers, not just at Aurora, but uh, that are in our community and they're giving back to make Oshkosh Event City, which it is. Right, well, and I'm just so thankful for the community as a whole. The volunteers, the businesses, the visitors. There's something for everyone. Definitely. And opportunities for everyone. So. Uh, this wraps up our November edition of Helping Hands. We're thankful that you t tuned in to watch us. Stay tuned also because upcoming will be our December show, which is not that far away. So I'm John Neiman with Aurora Medical Center. And Judy Ritchie, Community Advocate. Thank you for being with us.